Dear ladies and gentlemen, Pani Topanova, this is a 19th episode in the series of conversations and interviews with the intellectuals in Ukraine for those out there who are keen to learn more, think deeper, and hear from the original sources. В етері 19 випуск із серії розмов та інтерв'ю з інтелектуалами в Україні для тих, хто хоче дізнатися більше, думати глибше та чути з першого джерел. This is a project of Pan Ukraine who are in Ukraine right now under the dark and chaotic conditions of the continuing Russian invasion. There are no words enough to express our admiration of their dedication and commitment and as we are all Ukrainians who are fighting to defend their freedom today. Це проєкт Пан Україна, який зараз перебуває в Україні в темних і хаотичних умовах тривають російського вторгнення. Бракує слів, аби висловити наше захоплення колегами з Пан Україна, їхньою самовідданістю та наполегливостю, бо зараз ми усі українці, що боронять свою свободу. One of those who switched to be practically full-time volunteer is Eugen Stasinevich, a well-known literary critic who systematically collects aid for Kharkiv and the region, medicine, various humanitarian items and food. He buys and delivers. Please find all the details how to donate and support Evgen's initiative in the comments. Kharkiv will be grateful to you for any donation. Одним із тих, хто перейшов на практично повну зайнятість волонтером сьогодні, є Євген Стасіневич, відомий літературознавець, що систематично збирає допомогу для Харкова та регіону. Ліки, розмаїту медичну та гуманітарну допомогу та продукти харчування. Він купує та доставляє. Ви можете знайти усі деталі, аби пожертвувати та підтримувати ініціативу Євгена в коментарях. Харків буде вдячний вам за будь-яку пожертву. The project is co-hosted by Pan International, which has continued to provide a platform for freedom of expression for those currently under the highest risk. Our partners for today are Pan America, the Ukrainian Institute, the Ukrainian Institute London, the Harvard University Researchers Institute, and the Harman Institute at Columbia University and Ukraine World. We are streaming today's event to all partners' Facebook pages. Special thanks to Yulia Sinkevich for help in organizing the current event. Співорганізатором проєкту є Міжнародний ПЕН, який продовжує надавати платформу для свободи вираження поглядів тим, хто зараз перебуває в групі найвищого ризику. Сьогодні нашими партнерами є ПЕН Америка, Український інститут, Український інститут Лондона, Український науково-дослідний інститут Гарвардського університету та інститут Гаррімана при Колумбійському університеті. Ми транслюємо та Україна світ. Ми транслюємо сьогоднішню подію на всі партнерські сторінки у Фейсбук. Захід відбувається англійською мовою. Окремо подяка Юлії Сінкевич за допомогу в організації нинішньої події. Our speakers today are those who can approach the situation from the different cultural angles through literature and film and probably through the context of culture of transition. Tamara Gundarova, Doctor of Philology and Professor and Correspondent of the National Academy of Science, literary critic, culturologist, and expert on Ukrainian literature, modernism, postmodernism, postcolonial criticism, Kitsch, Chernobyl, and feminism. Since 1980, she has been a researcher at Tarasovchenko Institute of Literature of the National Academy of Science of Ukraine, Since 2003, she has been a director of the Department of Literature Theory and Comparative Studies. Professor Tamara has taught at Harvard University, Toronto University, Ukrainian Free University, Ukrainian Catholic University, Kiev Mohyla Academy and University of Munich, Germany. She has held the position of Dean of the Ukrainian Free University in Munich, an associate of Harvard University and executive director of the Critica Institute since 2016. And Professor Gondorova will talk to Nana Janelidze, Georgian screenwriter, film and drama director, who has been working in a film industry for 30 years. Her films were awarded prizes at different international film festivals, including Cannes, and became symbols of significant society changes like repentance, where Nana was scriptwriter and more, became the symbol of perestroika and was sold in 130 countries. Over 20 years ago, Nana established her own production company studio and became the producer for all the theater plays, films, and videos of her studio. Also, Nana is an important voice in creating a history of famous Georgian filmmakers. 
by writing her books and shooting documentaries. I would call Nana an important opinion maker in Georgian TV, radio, and film industry in general. Also, she has a great uh, history of cooperation with Ukrainian producers. Already mentioned today, Yuri Sinkevich and Maria Moskalenko on the feature film project Lesia, about Lesia Ukrainka. And now she's completing the feature film Lisa Go On, which is depicting the hard period of Georgia Abkhazia war conflict in early 90s, which was also provoked by Russia. So we have a lot of very important and historical cultural background today to be discussed. Dear ladies, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Can we begin? Yes, please. <laughs> what? First of all, I would like to express my deeply, deep love, admiration, and compassion to everything which is, which, what is happening now in Ukraine. Uh, and for me, it's a very big honor to participate in this brilliant project. I have watched some episodes and I was deeply touched by emotional, intellectual shining of these dialogues. And I learned a lot of about Ukraine, about your people, through your, uh, through people who were introducing Ukraine from this point of view, from point of war. So Tamara, thank you very much. And I, uh, uh, learned something about you and I uh, uh, saw that you have uh, written a very interesting book, Post Chernobyl Library. And now I think that we'll have Post War Library. Please uh, tell something about it. And then I'll share with you with my experience of uh, war because we have three wars, two wars before uh, this 20 uh, year war, and we have some experience. Maybe we are uh, one of the first swallows also these terrible events which are happening now in our world. Uh, thank you, Na Nana. I'm, I'm very glad, extremely glad that I meet you and um, that we have this, such a possibility to, to talk. Um, uh, uh, you know, when, uh, when, I, uh, when I was told that uh, I can talk with you, and I, I discovered that you uh, are the, uh, the author of the script uh, for um, Repentance by Tilkiza Buladze. Uh, I, 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 uh, I have a, I have a feeling that something um, in our world, something, some destiny, rules our meeting in our life. Because uh, this, this movie was so important for me, um, uh, not only because it was um, a kind of a sign of a period of perestroika. Uh, it opened absolutely a new um, way, a new aspect that it seems to me is also very important for us uh, today. Uh, this is a question of uh, our um, reception of the past, of historical past, of, of repentance, or paying the um, uh, this, this pain uh, for for the for the past that was so so brutal, and uh, this is a responsibility also for the past. So uh, this is all the questions that we uh, we put now and we, we should to decide now. And you know, you mentioned the post Chernobyl library. Um, actually. When I was writing this book, I um, uh, my idea was that um, in a new era of post post Soviet, I would call it, um, started with with Chernobyl, with Chernobyl disaster, uh, because it uh, a new world open uh, opened there, and um, this is a world that became so small, so, so fragile. And um, uh, endangered also by 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 uh, atomic uh, um, uh, and nuclear uh, war. Um, uh, but you know, um, uh, 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 when I uh, when I was writing this book, I also mentioned uh, uh, the the movie Repent, um, uh, Repentance uh, uh, that you 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 write you. Um, uh, as, as a screen uh, writer, uh, so it, it's uh, it's because it seems to me this um, aspect is very is very um, connected between um, them. 
um, uh, to my mind also um, uh, this movie repentance this movie repentance also opens opened a new era a new post-soviet um, consciousness i would say where this um, uh, the question of memory of um, the um, past that was not uh, not uh, paid for, for instance, uh, that haunt our, our future, our today's life, is also very, very important, as well as the Chernobyl disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, you, you say that we call our, our situation, our age, like a post-war, um, post-war reality, or post-war uh, library. Uh, you're absolutely right. I, Mm, I met that somebody, uh, some, some expert called um, the Russian uh, Georgian War of 2008 uh, a, first, a first imperial war of the 21st century. And it seems to me um, the Russian Ukrainian war that we have now, that, that Russia um, launched against Ukraine, uh, continues this imperial, imperialistic war uh, of the 21st century. And uh, um, this is, um, some, somebody told us that uh, we have a kind of, of a new uh, imperial turn in, in our political science and sociology and so on. So um, when we speak, uh, we, maybe we cannot imagine uh, the importance of uh, uh, the role of empire in the, in the history, in world history, because uh, as we know, uh, the empire always um, uh, fights back. Uh, so in, in case of Russia, we have exactly the same situation. You see, our, from, from my generation, the first meeting with Russian army was in 1989. It was April mm. days when thousands of demonstrators were demanding in Soviet Union for Georgia's independence. Mm -hmm. And the Russian army uh, arrived to Tbilisi, and there was two weeks there were meetings in the street, in the main street, Roosevelt Street, and everybody was standing the whole night. And you see, our meetings are very peaceful. People are singing Georgian songs and you know that they are polyphonic. They were recites. There was such a free and very interesting situation, but uh, step by step, you see, it was culminating. And on the 8th, 9th of April, the tanks were standing in, on the Rostovel Avenue. And it's very uh, interesting that the attack began at, the, at four o'clock of morning. I think that as you were bombed at four o'clock of morning or at three o'clock, it is their uh, mark that when people are mm -hmm. sleeping, you can uh, attack them. But everybody, the whole street was full of people and there were candles. And the, I, I remember there was a blind, group of blind uh, girls and who were singing. And it was so touching, these blind girls. And then they began to dance and this column of tongue begin to move to them. And all the administrators sit down because they decided that if they sit down, nobody will touch them as it was in Gandhi's film, if you know mm, this Gandhi. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and when they sit down, these horses stopped, but tanks did not stop. And there was iconic use of picture in my mind even now that a young fellow, he was, beating the tank with a stick. So stick against the tank, but tanks were coming and uh, they were soldiers with um, shovels and gas and they were beating people and 21 men were, 21 person were killed among them little girls, 15, 16, 17 years old, a lot of women and two or three men. And then people, fled to uh, Rustavelli Theater, to the main theater on the Rustavelli uh, Street. And one of the great actors, Kachikov, said he opened the door of Rustavelli Theater and these people rushed into the theater and he took them to the 
second level stage and on the first uh, level there was another stage so kgb came and they were seeking for people but carter said that we have nobody only on the first uh, level stage you can look there's nobody so they went away and people then in the morning they go to their homes but carter told me that when i went to meet this army I saw frightened, scared eyes of Russian soldiers, young men. They were looking very scared and feared. And, and, and Kahi told me. And I uh, thought, why are, you, why are they here? They are scared more than we. What's happening? Who is ordering them to do this? And uh, so you see, theater was with, you see, uh, extended his arms to people and uh, it saved people. It was our first experience of meeting this army. Mm -hmm. It was another war. It was in 1902-1903. And this war was after collapse of Soviet Union. And it was a very painful procedure because a lot of you see, bombs were put in uh, ever, through whole Soviet Union. And our Abkhazia Georgia conflict, which was a war and which lasted for 13 months and 13 days, and it was provoked also by Georgia because Abkhazia, a breakaway region now of Georgia, uh, during centuries it was part of Georgia, and the Russians were telling them that Abkhazia is not Georgia. So this you see, we, it, we were the, um, how to say, young state with young minds and something you see in our hearts, Caucasian our hearts. And so it was terrible war. And now Abkhazia is occupied by Russia, so it isn't our part. Uh, and then was this war of 2008. It was also terrible. And uh, it lasts only five days and Russian army and tanks were entering and our soldiers, Georgian soldiers, they were fighting like lions, but they were bombing them from the air. So I want to underline that in 1989, there was no Putin, it was Soviet Union. In nine, there were Gorbachev. In 1992 and three, there was Yeltsin. So you see, it doesn't mean who is uh, standing in the head of the of this country. Mm -hmm. Imperialistic, you know, how to say. Yeah. Uh, and that's why. So it doesn't depend on person who is. And you see, I cannot, uh, I never will forget in 2008 how we were absolutely alone. Now you have a lot of uh, friends uh, through Europe. And we were absolutely alone, but and, uh, none from Georgians will forget the help of Yushchenko, Viktor Yushchenko, Lech Kaczynski, and presidents of Estonia, Litva, and the prime minister of Latvia, as I remember, they rushed to Georgia. And you see that uh, the sky was closed and they flight to uh, Armenia and from Erevan, they moved to Tbilisi by cars. And it was very dangerous because the uh, soldiers were standing with tanks and you never uh, never know what will happen. And I remember I uh, just now, two or three days ago, I um, read uh, memories of Yushchenko and he is writing that I did not know what to do, but I knew that I would have to support them morally. These five presidents were standing in the street, and I uh, like this, his words. He was paraphrasing Kennedy when Kennedy was on the Berlin, uh, Berlin Wall in uh, 1963. Kennedy said, today I am a Berliner. And Yushchenko said, today I am a uh, Georgian. And all Georgians now want to say, today we are Ukrainians. And I can uh, tell you that everybody, all my friends, all my neighbors, the whole Georgia is waking up with news about Georgia, about Ukraine, and then going to sleep. But all our minds are to 
your country, what is happening, and we are very anxious and we are very nervous and we want to help you. And it's you see because we have our skin knew this this uh, uh, this feeling of war, what is that? So it's where we are. Uh, all our hearts are with you. And I want to express it to you that I want to know that we are very and very uh, close to you. Thank you, Nana. Uh, you're absolutely right when you talk, when you, um, you were talking about the different person who stands be, be, beyond the Russian invasion uh, to, into uh, Georgia. It was Yeltsin, it was um, uh, yeah, it was yeah yeah it was the Soviet time. It was Yeltsin, Gorbachev, yes, and then and then we have Putin. So um, uh, what 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 it means? It seems to me it means that um, and we, had, we we should it seems to me we should uh, talk about uh, very consciously that that uh, Russia, especially today's Russia, contemporary Russia, is infected by imperialism. And um, uh, this virus of imperialism uh, became an official politics during the last time, during the last period for, for Putin, for instance. And uh, uh, this idea of to have a great, great Russia, to, to return to great, uh, great Russia, and so on. This is so. Uh, this is the main, uh, main slogan of contemporary political uh, situation, polit polit politics elite in, in Russia. And um, uh, when somebody uh, says that Putin wants to restore the Soviet Union, I, I don't agree. It seems to me uh, we, um, we should talk about about the re returning, the return to the imperialistic politics to the uh, Russian Empire, because um, uh, Putin, it seems to me, he's sick of, of uh, he he wants to be a, a, like a Tsar. He he imagined himself like a Tsar. And um, you know. <clears throat> Um, just uh, just maybe a week before the war started, um, I was asked it, uh, why I don't want to leave uh, Kiev. I don't want to go somewhere because uh, because of uh, of this possibility of of war. And I answered, and I believed at the time that I I I I don't want to go uh, somewhere. I don't want to leave Kiev because this is my home. This is my land, and um, and uh, uh, I I have no uh, idea and that I, I don't have. I didn't have any feeling that Ukrainian has a, some kind of crime or criminal or some guilty for something. So Ukraine became independent country, and it 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 became visible. Uh, it has. Uh, have future, it fight for this for this future. So what what we uh, what we uh, have to do? Why we we should leave uh, our country? And then when when this uh, operation, I would say, as as uh, Putin called it, special operation, you know, I I was um, I I. Um, I was not only shocked, I, I was I was insulted by this idea. You know, uh, what it does it mean? It, it means that, that uh, we became an object of operation, uh, like a hero, hero like a, uh, just to, to cut our body, to cut our, our land uh, piece by piece. And so uh, like uh, in some laboratory, so so what Putin is, uh, is wanted seems to me, what he's looking for is to, to to uh, to object objectify us and to 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 show to to take Ukraine like a, like a laboratory, but we are not laboratory. Ukraine is not laboratory. Ukrainian has its his own story, his history and culture and so on. And we have thirty years of independence. Uh, for the for that time, we have two revolutions that shows how Ukrainian fight for freedom. Uh, for that time, uh, a new generation uh, grew up a new generation of young people who are absolutely different from the previous who does who who does not know this experience of the soviet time who are free in his in, in their mind who who knows uh, foreign language who, who like to travel who, who went abroad and, and so on and they they started to uh, and they wanted to live in ukraine and um, uh, you know when uh, when I was watching this, uh, this horrible stand from Bucha or Irpin, 
um, I just confess, uh, I, I would like to confess that I, I left uh, uh, Kiev and I, I was forced to leave uh, because, um, because for many reasons, and one of them was that um, uh, the place where, uh, from the place where I live in Kiev to, to Bucha is only seven, six or seven kilometers. So, because I live at the outskirts of Kiev. And, um, you know, when I, uh, I saw this picture from uh, this ruin of Irpino Bucha, and I remember how beautiful this place here was and where. And uh, I remember that uh, um, uh, this, uh, uh, this city was a city of our future because most of the people that live there was the young people. It, is, it was a very, it was professional who, 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 who had this possibility to buy this apartment because it was cheaper than in Kiev, for instance. But it is a, a place in areas that uh, usually starting from the, the beginning of the 20th century, it was a, a, a resort, a zone of resort, area of resort. So these are beautiful places. And so um, uh, when you see these um, places, the city of Jungs, uh, of uh, uh, where you, you see many children on the, on the streets and uh, and and you, you you feel this this energy of use and now when you see this how these places were destroyed you you understand that what what Putin is haunting what Putin wants to destroy is this young generation that was grew up uh, in the period of the independence he wants to 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 make us like a, a like a robots or something a mechanism that he he wants to control uh, and it seems to me this um, this operation, so called, is um, is uh, um, is what uh, uh, is this is a crime of, of of Putin in many cases, in, in many aspects. But this um, this uh, his struggling, his his intention to 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 destroy this uh, Ukraine and this uh, um, erase the, the, this generation is is a, a biggest crime. It seems to me. You see, now I remember uh, when there was during Abkhazia war, there was such a rumor that Chechens are coming to Tbilisi, these terrible boyviks, and we were terribly scared. And uh, my children and the husband, of course, but he didn't, to, uh, didn't take the gun. And uh, I was thinking, what can we do? How can we escape this? We, and then we were to escape this, uh, this danger. And you see, I decided if they will come and there were terrible rumors about them, the same as about Bucha. So we were, uh, I in my heart was waiting for that. And I decided I'll take my children and I'll um, uh, say, I will jump from uh, fifth uh, level of fifth floor of my mm -hmm. uh, and before we, will talk, before we are in our uh, in our uh, flat, I was um, I was making music with my little girl because she was going to a musical school, and I want to. And I decided that it, maybe it's the most wise thing to do our everyday routine to be with children, to tell them tales, to make music with them, to play on piano. It is the only way you can, uh, you can defend yourself from this uh, uh, terrible world. And uh, God bless us and Chechens didn't come, come to uh, Tbilisi. And you see, I was uh, reading, uh, I think it was your little essay about in your Facebook. Right. And, your student and about prose of Stefaniuk and mm -hmm. it me very deeply because you see I understand that you were communicated uh, you 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 say restoring communication through literature uh, with history of your country and with yes young students and people because I uh, read a little episode of Stefaniuk mm -hmm. and it was so so strong, so touching, and so modern and now, because now what is happening, it was happening one century ago. And uh, this, uh, you see, 
uh, in our history textbooks, nothing is written, nothing real. And you can, uh, you can learn it only through literature, I think. So uh, the uh, thing that now you are teaching uh, your students and they are, uh, uh, they are touching history through big literature, it's a very big and uh, very, I think, optimistic thing to do. And you see, when uh, I was thinking, what about can we speak? I and Tamara, I don't know her, but... I think that you see, we have to we have to think about future because yeah. future will come and we have to build what have they destroyed. We have to think how to help children, women to go through this terrible danger. And I think that uh, maybe through culture, though culture isn't defending us, but I remember there was one guest from Polish. Cultural Institute in Georgia, and he uh, told me a wonderful thing that all governments are complaining that culture costs very expensive. Mm -hmm. but they don't understand that the life without culture is much more expensive because now we are witnesses of uh, people without culture because butcher is uh, is. Uh, result of not people. We are mm -hmm. under of people. There is no culture. And we have to um, we have to pull culture in all levels of society. And it is the only way to defend them from being brutal, I think. Well maybe it's yeah. and uh, how do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely agree. Um, uh, you know, <clears throat> of course, from the beginning, um, everybody of us, each of us, started thinking how we can, how I can uh, can help Ukraine. What I have, what uh, I personally or somebody else uh, can do for Ukraine, and many of my my colleagues were young and and all the. Um, it doesn't depend on this on the uh, their field that uh, where they um, was dealing with, uh, for instance, this, this is philosophy or, or, or teacher or professor or, or opera singer or, 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 or dancer. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter. Um, everybody wanted to, to help, and many my my friend went to to to, to serve to, to army to support army or started uh, volunteering, and so I also. Uh, I, I also uh, started thinking what what I can do because I, I in some way I I have a feeling of of guilty because I I left Kiev I left Kiev uh, uh, because I I, I forced it to live to to live uh, but um, what I decided uh, and it comes uh, my it comes consciously for me is it what I have to do is uh, first of all to uh, to continue uh, to continue to work uh, what can I do the best and what is the best what I, it seems to me what I can do is just to lecture to teach to 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 write something and I also would like to 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 say my 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 uh, very uh, of course for each of us our our children and grandchildren uh, as the, the people that we love very much and we would like to to save them so I decided that I should take my grandson with me with, my, with me uh, because my uh, his parents they they um, they stayed stayed in Kiev so um, so my my way uh, here I'm now in Munich at the university and uh, where I have a, a possibility to 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 work on my project in my book on to write to to um, uh, not, not to not to avoid some kind of feel of guiltiness that I I'm here not in Ukraine but but to some extent that try trying to do something that I can so I I I, um, I brought here and I came here with my grandson so I started to 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 have two two function two main functions like a, a scholar on the one hand and like a grand grandmother on the other hand. Uh, but <clears throat> I, uh, you you talk about culture and about this my 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 essay um, uh, now. Um, 
uh, uh, I see that um, our, our, our attitude and our reception of this uh, situation is very conscious and I like it very much. For instance, I like very much the idea of collecting um, the stories of the world from different people, from different places, just to collect. This is, this is a document that should, should show should, 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 um, uh, who is perpetrator, who is a victim, and uh, to, to demonstrate what was told this, this um, Russia, Russia was doing in Ukraine. And because the human materials is the most, is the most uh, valuable material. So, and um, I, I, I support this idea very much. Um, and then uh, I see, uh, you know, I, I am a scholar and a literary critic in my field of literature, as you, I know that you also dealing with, with culture. So uh, we always uh, thinking about culture, uh, absolutely, uh, even, even during the war. So I, uh, um, I, I, um, I have some weakness and I feel that many people complain, uh, especially writers that say they lost the war, they cannot uh, find the word, the phrase, how to express, how to how to uh, reflect what is going on uh, around us, and it is absolutely natural because because yeah you know the uh, it's hard to to find this this true word how to express your feeling when you see for instance the the death around around us and and so um, uh, so horrible thing um, that happened to Ukraine. And then I decided that I, I would like to, to look at, at the uh, literary classics, at, at our culture, uh, because it seems to me uh, this is a collection of not only of different stories, but on different way of, of, of speaking about the, the, uh, the, the things that are horrible, that are so, so terrible. But the literature uh, during the old uh, many centuries, the literature, not only Ukrainian, but literature, the world literature, Renators, they try to express, to, to find this, this true words to, to express the feeling. And so I decided that um, I should write something about uh, the different Ukrainian authors, the different situation, the different uh, discourse about war or about something else, or about love, uh, that, because love is also during the war, it, it, it exists during the war, for instance. And I, I, I like very much when I see, for instance, on, on Facebook, the picture of a beautiful young um, uh, man and woman uh, who married who, who, who married just now during the war, you know, this is life, this is a, this is a um, significance of life, this is a, um, that life uh, always uh, uh, wins the, uh, the uh, evil. And uh, so I, 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 wrote, I wrote this is essay on Stefani, but what um, what, what was the reason why I started to write this was, was the essay that I, not essay, this was a voice of my students who sent me um, the record, his recorded uh, um, answer to, 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 to the exam. And when he tries to, to speak about the death of the mother, and how the children, uh, the small ch children, uh, they they um, uh, how they accepted, how they feel it. He he tried to uh, say this this one uh, one sentences three uh, six six times. Oh. So he, yeah, he tried to express, he tried to to find the the right words just to express, just to uh, uh, just to uh, say some some meaning. But not only that, he was uh, thinking about himself, about his mother, about many other children and mother in Ukraine who also uh, can be in this situation. So I was so, so uh, not impressed. I was um, so touched that I, uh, this is my, uh, the first time in my life, in my teaching experience that I feel uh, this, uh, uh, this, how the students, uh, how he, uh, how he felt. Uh, when he was writing, uh, when he was uh, doing his uh, homework, for instance. So, but uh, you're absolutely right. The, the culture, uh, the culture is also the force. Culture is also the the weapons that can can help us. 
And um, uh, I would like also to ask you, uh, for instance, I know that you are a specialist also in the in, uh, in, in, uh, uh, film industry in, in Georgia. Uh, how about how Georgian culture, Georgia, uh, culture in Georgia reacted or reflected um, on the war uh, of uh, Russian Georgia war in 2008 or, or the other war? How, how this uh, event was reflected in, 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 your, cul in your culture? You see, there are films about it, but uh, from my uh, experience, now I am uh, completing the film about Abkhazia-Georgian conflict, mm -hmm. which was provoked by Russia. And now we are telling about these stories from uh, Ukraine. It's very, uh, it's very good deal, and uh, you have to do it because my uh, film is based on diaries. Mm -hmm. War diaries from both sides, from Abkhazia and from Georgia. And still now we are like enemies because there is uh, the uh, is a wall of untrust between us because we don't know anything each other. And Russia is provoking also this, though we have no wisdom to break this wall and to uh, open our. Uh, hearts to each other. So you see, when uh, it was very interesting that a journalist uh, came to me with material about this work. It's a female journalist. Now she became my co-author, and she uh, was the war reporter. And she told me that it's very interesting to uh, write about this, to, to do something about this war. Uh, it was seven years ago. And you see, I wasn't interested in that war because Abkhazia was part of Georgia. So this war for me was absolutely uh, unacceptable. You see, and I don't want to know anything about it. But something was very touching for me and I began to work. And we worked for seven years. Uh, so we, I, I, I don't know, we have written, I think 20 versions of the script. And uh, at last we come to the solution that we have diaries, documentary diaries, but it is a feature film from both sides of war. So there are no right and liars. It, it is the same for all of them. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting that these diaries were very brutal. You know, now you know after Butcher, what is that? There was no so brutal, but there were very brutal for me. But uh, the language it was expressed was like Greek high tragedy. These mm -hmm. words, it was something amazing. And I decided we didn't know anything about these words, these monologues of war. And I decided that we have to do these monologues, but it was in the past. It was absolutely unbelievable for me to shoot in, in live action. So we decided to make it in animation. Though the diaries were in animation, but the whole film is live action and it is contemporary, our modern days. Uh, but the monologues of war are very strong. And uh, I was thinking that we have not uh, we have not tried to um, lost them, to lose them because it's very uh, like a treasure you see it's so a spiritual treasure and you have to know about it about their feelings of those people mothers soldiers nuns who were fi not fighting but they were poor witnesses they were victims some of them were soldiers and it's you see it's your history not written in history textbook it's life yeah. history well, I think that you have to write everything and it will have its time to grow up like a tree because we have to know everything about ourselves. Uh, despite this, it, we cannot step forward because we have a lot of guilt and a lot of pain. So we have to know everything about ourselves. We have to look in mirror and look to ourselves. I think so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, you mentioned uh, this monologue and diary. Um, of course, uh, now um, we, we are all um, 
uh, of course, we like fiction, but we we also uh, looking for some nonfiction, so some for some documentary materials because we, we want to to know. And it seems to me we started to uh, to um, appreciate it uh, how uh, the experience the uh, the experience of each people, how how the people how in, uh, each individuals survive in this very um, very unusual situation during for during the war, for instance, or some other, other disasters, for instance. And this, um, this personal, personal feeling, this personal story is, is, so, is so touching, is so, is so truthful, I would say, that we, 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 we believe. Because, you know, somebody says that we, we live in an in a age of post was truth that um, everything is true that you can make the med media can make truth from 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 uh, anything you, they, they, they want uh, but in this situation it seems to me um, such a um, true story such an individual story and they can bring us this feeling of uh, of the life itself of the human experience and um, at all and um, what is also I'm very interested in, and I know that you, uh, you, 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 you make a movie on Les Ukrainka, and this is not only Les Ukrainka, it seems to me, uh, but also about the woman, 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 woman about the writer, about female uh, writer, yes, because it's also about the place, the role of women, like a creator in the culture, for instance, or uh, in history as well. And Lesia Ukrainka, uh, this is one of her big, big subject. And um, uh, how this uh, woman who is usually, who plays the role of a shadow, who was treated like a shadow of history, and uh, who has not her name, his true name. She was, uh, she, she usually, she was uh, without any names. And how she can, can speak and how uh, he can be heard um, by 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 the Nazi people. It seems to me it's it's uh, it's uh, Lesia Ukrinka was the author who starts who who raised this this question. It seems to me uh, you also um, uh, choose this uh, this uh, the subject this this figure because of of uh, uh, that it is a, a woman who is also the writer. Yeah. Just I'm very grateful to you, Lesinkevich, who offered yeah. me this. And I was, uh, you see, very pleased and honored because uh, though I didn't know anything about her, and it was very symbolic for me that uh, Yula uh, phoned me and asked, What do you know about Lesia Ukrainka? As uh, all pupils of Soviet Union, we have in our uh, textbooks of uh, literature that there was Lesia Ukrainka and some yeah. portrait. Yeah. <laughs> woman and something about her and we were not interested in it it was you say covered with dust and the only thing that provoked me <laughs> was very uh, uh, we were um, uh, we were shooting the last scene of repentance uh, mm. and the, which the thing you see when the woman is uh, passing the uh, road and she's asking this road will lead me to the uh, church to the church yeah yeah i remember it yeah yeah <laughs> and we were shooting this episode on lesia ukrainka street which mm. is in and it shocked me you see the such symbols are touching me very deeply and i told you like, i don't know anything about lesia ukrainka but the last scene of repentance which is very symbolic was shot on her street. Let's mm -hmm. meet. Uh, wow. <laughs> it began so oh, wonderful. It's wonderful. I think one or two years of researching, and mm -hmm. now I know everything. Your value of uh, gas, how to say? I don't know. M skill gas about the whole Dragomanovs and the Gromada. Everything about you, but I was shocked by Les's person. This wonderful, beautiful, intellectual, uh, with shining brains woman, and with her nine language, nine uh, with, um, knowledge of nine languages, and with her wonderful, obsessed 
Yes, Ozerjima. Yeah, just... Yes, yeah. So you see, I was shocked. And uh, her words that if I was not Ukrainian, I would like to be Georgian, you know, these words, yeah. yes? And with her, so it was amazing, amazing adventure with lesser and Ukrainian history. And you see that we won, our project won, but then it, and so we have, as I know, nothing. Uh, people were congratulating us, but then it was revised and the project stopped. But I'm sure that, you see, it's after this war, which will uh, end very soon, will turn to this project because I have finished now my Georgian project. And now it's up to Lesa because you see, I think that her whole uh, life was struggle for dignity. It was national dignity. Yeah. It was women's dignity, and it was dignity of diseased person. Yeah, All absolutely. These are now the challenges of Europe. Now they come to this, and Lesa was thinking about it, and it was struggling against it in the end of 19th century and the beginning of 20s. So you see, such free woman, such beautiful woman uh, must be known by Europe. And I think that this, you say, values, European values were created by such woman, woman like uh, Lisa. And she wasn't feminist. She was free woman. It isn't feminist, you see, because she was considering the world in how it's beautiful. Uh, beauty. So she much more than feminist. It was a real big person. And I'm, I am sure that we have to do a big feature film about this wonderful, iconic person. I'm looking forward to, to, to watch your film and I, 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 I wish you success. And um, I just uh, would like to, uh, to say that, and I'm sure that we, we, uh, we have uh, uh, to continue our conversation because last year I wrote a book on Lesia Ukrainka. So I am also, <laughs> I am also involved very much in, in this, in this, this, this uh, um, Ukrainian uh, authors like Lesia Ukrainka. Thank you so much. I tell you that my guide women were Zabushko and Larissa Pavluchko. So you see, I was reading these pieces in Ukrainian, then I was putting them in Google, and I was reading. So it was very <laughs> different. But uh, wonderful looks, and Oksana Zabushko is wonderful, and she's so deep, yeah. and she's looking so deeply in Larissa's person and in her uh, works that. It was for me a very big, also a very big revealing of something new. So I was very happy with to this uh, year of working with Lesa, and I'm sure that we'll return to her. And I think that you see, after all this Ukrainian events, Ukraine and uh, Europe, uh, they need Lesa because Lesa yeah. is something very big. And even Ukrainians are not appreciating her on this level which she which, which, which she has in your spiritual life. So <laughs> I'm sure that you do. Yeah, I'm really grateful for this conversation. I do hope that it will start some kind of cooperation in the future. Mm -hmm. I can say that here is a lot to share from the both sides. And um, thank you, dear ladies, for sharing those insights, starting from how does it feel to be objectivized when words, war starts and how to deal with those feelings of duty, personal responsibility, and even guilt, and what is a lifelong struggle for dignity. And this is exactly what we are looking for in these conversations. What can I do today? How to cope? And today I would say continue. Continue doing what you can do the best. Give mm -hmm. your lectures, shoot your movies, collect the stories, document events, look for the proper words, name the things and express your feelings. Teach others to do that as well, through literature, through film, through proper discourse, and refine your trust. This is definitely what Ukraine and Georgia can do and can teach others. Thank you for those researches and for introducing culture as a response to the war. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your conversation as much as I did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Bye.
Olga, thank you, and also Yula, who was our matchmaker, <laughs> who connected right. us. Here. We are grateful to our partners for today's event, personal Yula Sinkevich, for this perfect match, for helping organizing the current event, and our traditional partners, Pan America, the Ukrainian Institute, Ukrainian Institute London, Ukraine World, the Harvard mm -hmm. University Ukrainian Research Institute, and the Harman Institute at Columbia University and for all the cross-streaming services in all the partners pages. Gratitude, of course, to Pan-Ukraine, which continues to stand at the front lines in the name of freedom and truth. And I want to remind you about the important fundraising initiative by Evgen Stasinevich, a literary critic who switched to be a born inter and systematically collects aids for Kharkiv in the region. Medicine, various medicals, humanitarian, and food. Kharkiv will be grateful for any donation. You can find all the details in comments. Ukraine needs your help right now. Pan International is proud to be a platform that supports freedom of expression. Thank you one more time, our great speakers. Thank you, our viewers. The next episode will be held next week on Tuesday, 3rd of May at 4 p.m. Kyiv time, 2 p.m. London time. And I would like to introduce you our future guests, Peter Weber, British film and television director and producer whose debut feature film as a director was A Girl with a Pearl Earring, and yes. Vladimir Sheiko, general director of the Ukrainian Institute and expert in cultural diplomacy, cultural management, marketing, and communication. So follow our dialogues on war, spread the word, and stand with Ukraine. This is our shared responsibility today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.